Today we're installing our entire Battleborn and Victron electrical system. But before we do, we have to take you back in time to when we were in Pensacola. This is The Bus Life. So we've done a lot of changing in our electrical system, maybe not a lot of changing, but some changing since when we first got all this stuff. So what we're doing, I just wanna walk through it again. We've got three of these Battleborn Game Changer 3.0s. These are the GC3s, 270 amp hour batteries each. One of the things where we made a change is in the inverters, originally we only had one, but we want to be able to do a split phase. So we've got two uh, 3000 watt Victron Energy Multi Plus inverters. Another thing we did is because we have our solar panel sectioned in two groups on our roof, um, after doing some research, we decided instead of going with just one solar charger, we went with two, one for each group of four solar panels. So the first thing we're gonna do is install our inverters. I have a panel in here that I made a little while ago. It's a carpeted panel that we'll be mounting the main things on, probably the inverters and our solar controllers. We're gonna mount on there, see if there's any room left to, to mount the other items. All right, so I'm going to attach my hanging bracket. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and try to put our first inverter in place. Yeah, Ashton wouldn't be able to hang this up here. Yeah, I'll prove to you that I can. These are pretty simple to connect. You have your wires coming in from your solar panels that will connect into these ports here. And then you'll have this go directly to your battery bank and it will charge your batteries. It's pretty simple. All right, so I have my wire connected in my first solar controller. Now make sure if you're doing this, that you've got a fuse on your hot line. Okay, so you generally want a fuse close to your solar controller, and you also want a fuse close to your solar panel. That way, if you ever have a short, say, up by your solar panel, it will it will blow the fuse. And if you ever have a short down here, coming into your, your charge controller, it will blow the fuse down here. And now we are getting ready to place our Battleborn batteries. I want to just slide them in there and see how they size up. Oh yeah. So rather than go through every single piece of equipment I've got, there's two ways you can kind of look into what we have and what we have going in here. One, we did an initial video where when we received all of this equipment and we kind of talk about it, there's been some changes made like we went with double inverters instead of just a single inverter. We've added double smart solar controllers instead of a single smart controller. So those changes have been made. I'm gonna put a full list of everything in the video description so you can check that out. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make battery terminal connectors. So I ordered some crimpers and wire cutters on Amazon. I'll put the link for that in the video description. The gauge of wire we're using is like a one to zero gauge wire. Got a package of terminals. Like butter. Rotate this around. Pull this off. Slide this in. Now we have a nice solid terminal. But there we go, there's one terminal. Now what you would never want to do is touch these two wires together because it would go. 
Okay, now that I've got the batteries all connected together, I need to try to spin this entire battery bank around because I want these to face the back. So I'm thinking here, if I ever want to add a fourth battery, that I might want to scoot this bank over enough to where another battery bank will slide in here. They actually have a diagram on here how they want to see this go all together. So we just want to make sure and follow that. So we have our jam nut, which is first. Then we have our locking washer, which is next. Then we have our flat washer. Under that is our nickel plated spacer, which we leave that there. That's what our terminal goes against. Now we're gonna attach this right there. Go over that like that. This piece can go in there. Okay guys, so we have our main fuse here connected in to our on off switch here. Now this is gonna run over and we're gonna connect this into our bus bar and from our bus bar, it kind of disperses from there. Okay, give me a screw. Next, I'm gonna connect my negative bus bar here. I'm so tight of space with all this. I'm trying to fit everything and keep it looking clean. So now that we have our negative bus bar connected, we have our positive bus bar connected, we have our on off switch here, which I have in the off position. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my 500 amp fuse into my fuse holder. So I'm drinking some Roadway coffee here, kind of medium to dark roast called Mexican Cafe. Check it out on roadwaycoffee.com. All right, guys, I got both of my wires done and ready to go into my fuses. Both of my main runs coming from my bus bar are connected to my 150 amp fuse holder. Now I need to just connect two wires going from there to my fuse panels over here. So I got my first fuse panel hooked up over here and now I only have one more to do. And that for the most part will give us 12 volt power throughout the entire bus. Julie's actually on the inside right now hooking up all of our light switches and things like that. I'm cutting out the light switch holes. A triple switch that's gonna be in here. So usually I put tape around it just to protect the, the veneer and the finish in case I slip with the blade. I just have to do the hole and put the switch in and voila, I'll be ready to go. All right. Yeah. All right guys, so I've got both of my 150 amp fuses hooked up to my main fuse panels over here. Really the only thing left to do to get power running to these all these circuits here is to run our ground wires. All right guys, so one of the important parts of our system is this battery monitor. This battery monitor will install inside the bus and it comes down with a, like it looks like a phone cable and it connects into this shunt. All right guys, so the last uh, step in installing the shunt is connecting this power wire to the terminal of our battery and then into the side of the shunt there. And then we'll be able to monitor all of our battery activity. There we go. 
We have a 220 system here. So we've got 110 coming from one inverter, 110 coming from the in other inverter going into our panel and distributing the power there. The main reason we needed to do that is for our heating and AC unit because it is a 220 unit. But we're ready to finish this up. So the next step really in this stage is connecting in all of our wiring. This is our 110 wiring coming from our transfer switch and come and going into this panel. And then we gotta connect in 12 volt wiring into the inverters to power them. And then this system is really pretty much set up and ready to go. So with these inverters, we've got our 12 volt power that's over here. We've got our negative here. We've got our 110 here and both these inverters are exactly the same Okay guys, so one of the last stages of this massive install is the ground wires. I'm installing a current surge limiter. I've got two of these, one for each inverter. It's to provide surge protection actually for the batteries. So when the inverter kicks on to charge the batteries, there's a surge. This basically buffers that surge and protects the batteries. What do you think of this? This system is pretty cool looking, huh? That's this so is like the heart of the bus. Yeah. yeah, what do you think? Not too impressed? Okay guys, I got my first one installed here. I've got my wire running up behind it. This will go in and connect to my positive here. And I'm connecting in my ground coming from my inverter into the top of this. And down at the bottom, we'll connect that into our bus bar. All right guys, the last stage of installing our Battleborn and Victron system is installing the remote that goes here on our wall. A screw piece that I can screw onto the back of it to tighten it against this wall. All right, now let's see if we've got any power. So this is the cable that comes up from our shunt. And I'm gonna plug that into the back of our remote here. Okay guys, so we are getting ready to give a final test on this whole system by turning on my main switch here. One thing I wanted to mention is I did go on the roof and I connected in my solar panels to the main wire coming down and those are working. So my solar controller, as you can see, my float light is on here. Those are working. But in order to get the power coming from my solar into my batteries, I've got to throw this main switch. And also that, that will allow power to go to my inverters. So then we have power in the bus. So let's go ahead and turn this on. <laughs> Thank you. 